In this unit, we're going to be looking at how we can ionize different types of compounds into water. The first thing you want to do is identify the cations and the anions when you look at your equation. So our very first one, we have sodium chloride, and we add it to water. We're going to see we break it up into one sodium ion that is aqueous and another that is a chlorine ion that is also aqueous. Next up, we have iron 3 chloride. We can see the iron has a positive 3 charge, while our three chlorines, each one has a negative 1. These are going to ionize into our solution, producing one ion of iron 3. And then we're also going to be producing three moles worth of chloride ions. Now, looking at the next two problems, we can see that this one, CH4, which is methane, is covalent. It's covalent because it's two nonmetals that are bonded together. And since they're nonmetals and it's covalent, it will not dissolve into ions. Instead, it's going to dissolve into individual molecules. Same thing for our next one. We have C6H12O6, which is glucose, otherwise called sugar. And because it's also covalent, it will not physically break down like the ions above, but instead will just be an individual molecule that is in solution. Let's try doing the exact same thing, but with polyatomic ions. So you're going to need reference table E. Our first one, we have ammonium chloride. And when we separate the positive ammonium from the negative chloride, we can see both have one as their charge. This makes a positive one NH4 ion that's gonna be dissolved in solution. And it's also gonna be accompanied by one chloride ion that is also dissolved into solution. Up next, we have calcium sulfate. With calcium sulfate, it's probably best to do the polyatomic sulfate first, which is a negative two, and it's gonna balance out correctly with a positive two calcium ion. And here you can see one calcium ion that is dissolved into solution with also one SO4 sulfate ion that is also in solution. And with our last one, we have zinc hydroxide. Now noticing we have two hydroxides and each one is negative one, which makes our zinc a positive two. However, there's only one zinc, which is why you can see it written as Zn plus two. But now we have two moles of hydroxide that is going to be dissolved into our solution.